I'm gonna start this review by saying this is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. And you guys know that I've seen a lot of bad movies, so that's saying something. Now I just wanna be clear, I don't care what kind of religious message this movie is sending or whatever. The reason I hate this movie so much is because not only does it fail completely in terms of writing and acting and just overall production, but it's actually pretty insulting to the audience. Now you may be thinking, oh, come on, Mark, it's got Nicolas Cage in it, so there must be some sort of entertainment value. And you'd be right to think that, because like I've said before, anytime Nick Cage is in a movie, there's a pretty good chance we're gonna get to see a good old Nicolas Cage freakout. Especially in a movie like this. I mean, you got the whole end of the world thing going on, all of the characters are under stress and completely confused throughout the whole movie, but no. There's no point in this film where Nick Cage hilariously loses his shit. Now this is actually a remake of a really shitty movie from 2000 starring Kirk Cameron. So, I mean, why not remake a bad movie into another bad movie? Now let's just take a moment to look at the posters from this movie because they're hilarious. Let's take a look at this one. I mean, wow. Even in the poster, Nicolas Cage looks just incredibly bored. And it's not just in this one, it's in this one, and this one too. I mean, you know your movie's in trouble when not even the marketing department can make it look the slightest bit exciting. And to be fair, it's not really their fault. I mean, what else are they gonna do? The, the poster's not just gonna be him sitting in the cockpit because that's basically where he was throughout the vast majority of this movie. So they tried, you know, they got all the characters standing here in the middle of this road. You know, you got New York City burning in the background and then you put the characters slightly off center for what reason? Why? Oh, so that you can show this road here going to what? Going straight into the water? I mean, where is this location? Where is this supposed to be? You may be thinking, okay, well, this is supposed to show, you know, the end of the world. The city's on fire, and this is supposed to represent all the flooding. Okay, that's cool. Except nothing like this happens in the movie. There's nothing even remotely close to this. So we haven't even started the movie yet, and already this sucks. So the movie starts in an airport, and it's just amazing how boring the first 30 minutes of this movie is. The writing is so bad that you'd be hard pressed not to turn it off in the first five. I'm still amazed that this movie was given a wide release. When you watch it, it feels like a made for TV movie. A crappy made for TV movie. I'm just gonna sum it up for you. This girl Chloe flies into town to surprise her dad, Nicolas Cage, but he's a pilot and has to fly to London and bang some chick that's not his wife. Anyways, her mom is super religious now, but she doesn't believe any of that stuff and has a conversation with an investigative journalist named Buck Williams. So Nicolas Cage boards the plane, and I mean, look at this. Look at all this sin here in first class. You got greed, I'm pretty sure this guy is wrath and envy all rolled into one. So finally stuff starts happening, and in a flash it seems like all the children have disappeared and all that's left is their clothes. And why are their clothes just falling from this guy? Were they just floating in the air when all of this happened? I mean, what's going on here? Is this the mysterious work of God or some kind of a pedophile magician? But wait, there's adults that are missing too, like the guy sitting beside Buck. Well, I gotta say that's surprising. I was assuming that he was supposed to represent gluttony, but I guess I was wrong. So Nicolas Cage comes out of the cockpit and provides us with yet another Awesome Nicolas Cage reaction. I think that's the same reaction that they used in the poster. People everywhere are just disappearing, like the driver of this car, which is kind of weird because the engine is revving. Gee, those must be some really heavy shoes that they left behind. Now everyone has resorted to looting and violence because that's the first thing that would happen in this situation. Forget shock and confusion. Sinful people don't have any time for that. I also love how this news report comes up within seconds. I mean, I would believe it if it was Fox News because we all know they wouldn't lose any employees. A bunch of people get angry and start rushing the cockpit demanding answers as if the captain's gonna have any. Yeah, like the captain is just going to make an announcement like, uh, Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. I apologize for the inconvenience. I accidentally pushed the random teleportation button. Uh, if you just all take your seats, we'll get this whole thing sorted out. 
In the meantime, please relax and enjoy our in-flight movie, which is Kirk Cameron saving Christmas. And I'll also have the flight attendants remind everybody where the exits are located in case you feel it would be a better option to just jump out of the plane. Back at the mall, it's like Black Friday all over again. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if I was Buck in this situation, I don't think it would be all that bad. I mean, I'm flying first class with a busty drug addict, a angry dwarf, and Nick Cage is the pilot? I mean, there's your in-flight entertainment right there. So Chloe is now running home because her car was smashed by a plane with no one in it. Guess it was an all-Christian flight. And while she's running, a couple of criminals on a moped just steal her bag because, of course, that's all who's left, right? The world's going crazy. Then a school bus falls off a bridge, but it's okay because there's no children in it. I guess kids just all get a free pass into heaven. I'm, you know what, I'm just gonna ask it, why? Why is that? And also, what's the age cutoff for that? Because you know what, I'm sorry. There's just no way that every single child either believes in God or is without sin. I can pretty much think of any age from my childhood where I was just loaded with sin. I'll just pick a few off the top of my head. Okay, how about uh, uh, gluttony? That uh, is a very good description of any pizza party that I participated in. Uh, sloth? Well, that just pretty much defines every summer vacation. How about lust? I mean, holy crap. Uh, there's too many examples, but uh, put it this way. When I was around the age of 12 or 13, I seem to remember my showers becoming a little bit longer. And if you want to paint a perfect picture of childhood wrath and greed during the 90s, I, I got three words for you. Pogs during recess. Then we just have scene after scene of Chloe wandering around town, finding that people have disappeared all over the place. And there's no suspense here. There's no tension. This is all just boring and repetitive. The audience gets it. We know what's going on. There's no mystery here because the whole idea of the rapture has been implied since the very beginning. And then they leave these little clues here and there, which just become incredibly stupid because like I said, anyone who doesn't know what's going on at this point hasn't been paying attention in the slightest. I mean, you could watch this movie on mute and understand everything that's going on here. And now we have the moment where our characters figure it all out. And it's at this moment that as a member of the audience, you start to realize that you're probably not gonna see anything entertaining at this point. You might not even get a decent Nicolas Cage freakout. And I think that's what disappoints me the most about this movie, because going in, I was already expecting the bad acting and writing. So Chloe finds a church and talks to the pastor. Well, according to the pastor, he got left behind as well because he doesn't believe in God. Yet at the same time, he explains to Chloe that God took her family to protect them. Wow, I mean, where do I even start here? Uh, this guy's a pastor, but he doesn't believe in God. Now, I've made some mistakes before in my life, but I'm gonna recommend that you don't dedicate your life to something you don't believe in. But, you know, that's, that's just a suggestion. Then Chloe decides to kill herself for some reason. I mean, why would she do that? Even if I thought my family was gone forever, I wouldn't just throw myself off of a bridge the next chance I got. I'd probably take some time to figure out what's going on. But anyways, Chloe gets a call from Nicolas Cage and decides she wants to live. And then we get this hilarious sequence of her running to this really intense music. The only problem is that the sequence isn't cut to be intense. So it just kind of comes off as kind of funny. It's like watching somebody do a, you know, a light jog to some really heavy music. Nicolas Cage needs a place to land the plane, which is now out of fuel, so Chloe starts clearing off a stretch of highway that's under construction. Anyways, he lands the plane and they all hug and Buck says it's the end of the world and this is Chloe's response. Not yet. I'm afraid this is just the beginning. And that's the end of the movie. I'm serious when I say this is one of the worst movies I've ever seen and that is one of the worst endings I've ever seen. To call this whole thing a giant mess would actually be a compliment. Is this movie supposed to be about the end of the world or about Nick Cage trying to land a plane? There is no reason to watch this movie, none. 
Even if you're religious, there's no reason to watch this movie. The movie condemns the characters right from the beginning. So what's the point of watching them? Why should I care if they land the plane or not? It doesn't matter. They're going to hell, apparently. Nothing that they do in this movie changes the outcome. So what's the point? It's hilarious how this movie wants you to root for these characters to survive this whole ordeal, but then at the end of the movie basically says, yeah, well, you know, they're still going to hell. And you might be saying, yeah, well, they're making a sequel, but you know what? I don't care because they rarely greenlight movies that do this bad at the box office. But that's it. I'm done. You know, I, it, this is finished and thank you guys for watching, but I have been sleeping terribly lately. So I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna get to bed early and uh, I'll see you guys next time. saved. No, please stop. No, no, ah, ah, no, Cameron. Oh, oh, what a nightmare. Wait, why am I naked? Kirk? sleep. Just watch a movie or something. Now this is actually probably my favorite quote of all, because if you really dig into what he's saying here, it's actually a great commentary on our society, and I think where we're all... What's, what are you doing? I'm working on the show. What does it look like? On fanboy flicks? I deleted fanboy flicks months ago. What? <laughs> I'm not gonna get a million subscribers talking about bad movies. Then what, what is this? This is my show where I talk about how awesome Jaden Smith is. <laughs> oh, come on. Crazy nightmares, man. Seriously though, why am I naked?